Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring a data center underlay eBGP learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. We have five devices, and those devices are Spine 1, Spine 2, Leaf 1, Leaf 2, and Leaf 3. Now, notice how each device has its own autonomous system number. You can see Spine 1 uses 64991, Spine 2 uses 64992, and then Leaf 1 uses 64881, Leaf 2 64882, and Leaf 3 64883. And you can also see here in the topology, the IP addresses as well as the interfaces associated with those IP addresses. And that'll be important because we will be using those IP addresses for our eBGP peering sessions. And so keep that in mind. That is in the 172.16.1.something slash 31 range. And so leaf one here on XE000 would use 172.16.1.1 slash 31. And so that would be that interface address. And then what is the point of getting an underlay network together? Well, really the point is that we are going to be sharing the loopback IP addresses through the underlay network. So then the overlay network can use those loopback IP addresses. Now we won't be configuring an overlay network in this video as we're just focusing on the underlay network for this learning byte. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is the CLI for spine one and we need to jump to protocols, BGP, we'll say group, we'll say DC underscore underlay. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set the, the type to external since we are using eBGP here. And then we'll set the local AS. Recall that spine one uses 64991. And then we'll set the neighborship information. So spine one is pairing with leaf one, leaf two, and leaf three. So for leaf one, 172.16.1.1 would be the neighbor address. And then the peer AS is 64881. And then we need to do the same thing for leaf two. 1.3, peer AS there is 64882. And then set neighbor again for leaf three. And that's dot five. And then one thing we need to do here is we need to set an export policy as the loopback address will not be exported without it. And we'll just call this LO0 export. And we need to configure this policy. This hasn't been configured yet. Okay, so we have that configured. So that is the underlay group for spine one. So let's go ahead and commit that configuration. And let's jump to spine two. And with spine two, we're going to kind of mirror what we had there. Set the type to external, local AS, the local AS for spine two, six, four, nine, nine, two. Then set that export policy that we haven't configured yet. Then we'll set the neighbor information. That is leaf one. That's the neighbor information for leaf one. Specify the peer AS. 64881. Set neighbor. Dot nine. Peer AS 64882. That's for leaf two. Dot 11. Peer AS 64883. That's for peer three. And so that is that configuration for the BGP group. We need to configure that policy again. And then we're done with that configuration for spine two. Let's go ahead and jump to leaf one. Jump into configuration mode. Go to BGP. Again, it's going to be external type for eBGP. We're setting the local AS, and with leaf one, it's 64881. Then we set the neighbor information. 
So it's just going to be pairing with two devices here, spine one and spine two. Dot zero for spine one. And the pair AS is 64991. And for spine two, it's dot six. 64992 for the peer AS. And we have to export the loopback address as well. And we need to configure that policy. And commit the configuration, and we'll go ahead and jump to leaf two. Configure the BGP group there as well. Set the type to external. Set the local AS to 64882. Then set the two neighborships with spine one and spine two. Dot two for spine one. Peer AS is 64991. Dot eight for spine two, pair AS is 64992. I have to set that export policy again. Commit the configuration, then we'll go ahead and jump to leaf three. So here is leaf three. Jump into configuration mode and go to protocols BGP. Set the type to external. We'll also set our local address or local AS that is. 64883. Then set the neighbors and spine one is going to be 172.16.1.4. And the PRAS is going to be 64991. And then for spine two, it's going to be 172.16.1.10. Pair AS is 64.992. And we need to set that export policy to export the loopback address. and we'll commit that configuration. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to spine one where we first configured this and see what we have for BGP sessions. Here's spine one. And we have three sessions, that's great. We have that first session, which is two, leaf one. And then the second session is leaf two, and the third session is leaf three. And we can jump to spine two to make sure we have all the connections with spine two. And again, we have the three BGP sessions with leaf one, leaf two, and leaf three. That's perfect. Those sessions are established and they are functioning. And notice that we are getting some routes. So let's take a look at the route table for those BGP routes. And this looks good. So from the perspective of spine two, we can see we have the loopback address for spine one. Then we have the loopback address for leaf one, leaf two, and finally, leaf three. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. So let's look at spine one, make sure we have that as well. And you can see here, it's similar. We have spine two, leaf one, leaf two, and leaf three. So let's jump to leaf one and verify that. You can see here that we do have the necessary routes. We have uh, spine one, spine two, leaf two, and leaf three. So let's jump to leaf two and have a look. You can see here, very similar. Spine one, spine two, leaf one, and leaf three. Then finally, let's check leaf three. You can see here, looks pretty good. Spine one, spine two, leaf one, and leaf two. 
So everything looks really good here. We've set up the data center underlay network using eBGP and the loopback addresses for all of the devices are being distributed successfully. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure and verify a data center underlay network. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.